Hello everyone and welcome to our lecture on RANZAC. So until now we have found our interest points or corners in the image and we describe them and match them between any images. We also learned what type of transformations that we can apply to images so that we can align them well. But the only problem that we left out are the outlier matches or incorrect matches that we find between two images. In this simple example, you can clearly see that while most uh, point matches seem to be going to, towards the correct places, there are a couple of them that go just to very incorrect places. And this is very normal and a common problem in feature detection and matching. So today we will learn how to get rid of them so that we can estimate our transformation in a robust way even when there are many incorrect uh, point matches. So by robustness we mean that when we have a lot of error noise points we still want to be able to get the correct transformation. But we will start with this simple line fitting example. As you can see there is a good hypothesis here. The line that is crossing most of the points. And, but there are also many outlier points that has nothing to do with this line. When we take the average of them or when we compute the least squares fit, in other words, uh, it will give us a very incorrect result because it will try to match everything. And when there are outliers and there are incorrect matches or incorrect points in this line fitting problem, then uh, the average will not work in our favor because the incorrect matches can be incorrect in any way while our main hypothesis or our inlier points do follow the model that we are trying to fit. In order to fix this, we will try a lot of hypotheses. We will fit a lot of lines using different points and see how many of them actually or how many of the original points actually agree with our hypothesis line fitting. By agree, we mean that when we apply the transformation, the error that we expect uh, should be very low or the line should pass very close to the points that are in layers and outliers are everything that are outside this uh, model that doesn't fit with our hypothesis. So the main idea here is to generate many many hypotheses at once and look at how many in layers each of these hypotheses generate and then we will just pick the hypothesis with the most number of in layers that agree with our data. In our line fitting example, when we fit a line like this, only three points will agree with it. So we will count the in layers as three. But when we put a line like this, many points, in, in fact the points that we want to represent in this line, uh, matches our hypothesis. So the in layer count rises to 20. Then we can pick the line with the most in layer count. This is not a closed form mathematical solution. This is uh, hypothesizing and testing over and over again. The idea is instead of trying to find the line using a mathematical optimization formulation, we will just fit many, many lines computed in a very simple way. For example, in just two points, because that's what a line requires to be defined. Just pick the best line essentially. In a simple image matching example, we can see this perhaps more clearly. So some of the point matches that we find will be correct and some of them will be simply incorrect. That will be our outliers. When we are doing random sample consensus, we will pick one single match at random and then count how many of the others agree with us. Here we are using only one match because only a single match is enough to define a translation that is just shifting the image uh, as a transformation. If we pick this line, then a majority of the lines will agree with it. So the in layer count of this transformation operation will be high. And the two incorrect points here uh, will be our outliers in this hypothesis. But when we pick a outlier point to generate our hypothesis, then uh, there will be no or very few in layers that agree with this uh, erroneous match because the error is essentially random so it will give us something very different than others or each error will provide a different hypothesis so we can test them against each other to eliminate them. 
So the main idea is simply this one. And using Ransack, we can handle up to 50% outliers, which means that even if only around half of our matches are correct, with Ransack, we are able to get the correct transformation out of these matches, which is a very a useful and strong property of Ransack and that's why it is very commonly used in many different uh, computer vision applications. So there will be some parameters associated with how we do the Ransack given a specific problem. For example, we will have to define an inlier threshold. This inlier threshold essentially represents how much of an error that we expect from a point that, are, that is uh, correctly matched. The point locations or the point matches will not always be super perfect but the noise on them will be predictable and usually if you average noise out it will be zero. So we need to define some type of a threshold to count some of the matches as inliers that means that fits with our model and others will be defined as uh, outliers and this is a parameter similar to the thresholds that we put in Kenny edge detection for example. We will also define number of rounds, that means how many hypotheses we need to generate or we need to keep generating uh, so that we can ensure that we can find the actual solution with a high probability. So for example, we will say that there is possibly 20% outliers in a problem and we want to find the correct solution almost for sure, let's say 99%. And given that specifications, we will need to figure out how many different hypotheses we have to generate. The inlier threshold is more visible in this simple example. Here, the point matches are plot in terms of how much X translation and Y translation that they represent. And you can see that there is a cluster of points that are not at the exactly same location, but very close by that point to a, a very similar X and Y translation in the end. So we want to set a threshold that will uh, encompass all these similar points together. We don't want it to be too low so that it doesn't count very similar points as outliers, but we don't want it to be too high as well so that it doesn't catch outliers by mistake. If we go back to our line fitting example, now we need to generate a hypothesis and how to generate this hypothesis depends on what type of a problem that we are trying to solve. In this uh, line fitting example, we need to create a line and a line is defined by two points. So we need to pick any two points at random and compute the line fitting through that one. That is our uh, hypothesis line. That is one iteration of Ransack. So typically, we will have to define how many samples per hypothesis that we will use. And this is usually just the minimum number of point matches that we need, which was four point matches for homography, for example, and one uh, point match for uh, translation. It can be higher than that. It will be just a more robust estimator in the end. Then we will uh, fit a model or solve for the homography or fit a line or whatever. Uh, using uh, these randomly selected samples and then count the number of inliers that agree with the hypothesis or the transformation that these four points or these two points generate. We will keep repeating this and keeping track of how many inliers that we have for each hypothesis and then we will choose the model with the highest inliers. So when determining how many rounds or how many iterations or how many different hypotheses that we need to generate to get a correct solution with a very high uh, probability we want to model it mathematically if we have a given outlier ratio or an estimated outlier ratio e and we want the correct result with let's say probability p the our example from before was 20 percent outliers and 99 percent probability of getting the right answer if you remember then we can determine the number of rounds uh, with a formulation like this one. And this table uh, gives us a quite a good understanding of what we are dealing with. If we have very few outliers like 5%, 10%, very few iterations give us with very high probability the correct result. But if the number of inliers are not that high or if we need many different points to generate a hypothesis, for example for homography, then this number uh, gets higher and higher. 
we want to keep this number low or we want to make sure that we don't overdo it because this takes quite a bit of time we need to do the model fitting over and over again so we want to do it only as many times as we need and in terms of uh, the percentage of outliers this plot gives you an idea that Ranzac starts being impractical at around 60 percent uh, outlier ratio which is very impressive which means that even when most of the uh, matches that we find are incorrect we can actually uh, manage to find the correct solution out of all this noise using Ranzac. And you can come back to this plot of different transformations that we defined in our last lecture on how many points that we need to generate a hypothesis at minimum. So in the end, uh, Ranzac is simple and general. It can be applied to many different types of problems because the idea behind it is essentially generate a hypothesis and try out many many times as simple as that but it has some parameters to tune which could be a challenge to generalize to many different types of images for example in some cases with high outlier ratios or with high uh, number of points that we need to match to generate a hypothesis it can be impractical in terms of running time because we need to do it sometimes too many times to be practical and after we do the Ranzac and after we choose our best hypothesis at hand then we have a set of inliers now we can use our averaging method or our least squares fit as we saw in the last lecture uh, to get our uh, precise estimation of the transformation between two images Ranzac is a voting based algorithm so Whenever we generate a hypothesis, we let each point vote if they want this hypothesis or if they agree with this hypothesis or not. And then the best hypothesis wins. And there are many variations of the core Ranzac idea. This is just the vanilla Ranzac uh, that makes it more robust for more specific problems. As we finally know about Ranzac, we learned all the necessary things that we need to create a panorama. Given two images, we will first detect features and then match them. Then we will apply Ranzac to compute the best homography that agrees with most of our point matches. And then we will combine the image together using image warping. The required reading for today's lecture is uh, section 8.1, but only 8.11, 2 and 4. And although we didn't have a MATLAB session today, you really should uh, check this uh, MATLAB page that is linked below on feature-based panoramic image stitching. This tutorial does everything that we have been doing for the past week. Uh, first detects the features and then matches them, generates the hypothesis and uh, does the image alignment uh, for many different images. So the code could be a bit complex but try to understand what the code is actually doing because we have already learned about everything that is done in this code in the lectures. Thank you very much and I will see you in our next lecture.